This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel at www.tipsquirrel.com. For all kinds of Photoshop and Lightroom goodness, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or go to facebook.com slash tipsquirrel. Hi everybody, Mike Hoffman here and in this episode of our continuing series on Photoshop CS6 3D capabilities, we're going to be looking today at extrusions. And extrusions is a very technical sounding term for something that is actually quite a bit of fun and very useful when it comes to creating 3D objects. You're looking at an extrusion here. And extrusions first came to us in Photoshop CS5, where they were called by Adobe with a very strange name, Reposé. And in CS6, they abandoned the Reposé term and they just reverted to this more standard extrusion. And so we're going to be looking at extrusions today, seeing how they work within Photoshop CS6. And this is the extended version, by the way. If you have the Creative Cloud, make sure you're running Photoshop Extended. And when we talk about extrusions, it helps to think of it in terms of something maybe a little more conventional. And so I always like to use this example when I'm talking with people. And this is the classic extrusion, the Play-Doh Fun Factory. And here you can see you've got a little device. You put the Play-Doh in, you squeeze it, it comes out, and you have a lot of fun. And Photoshop can be like this as well when we're talking about extrusions. When we look at extrusions, we're talking about taking a shape such as this shape and essentially forcing material through the shape so that it stretches out kind of like a noodle or a pasta in the shape of this outline. And so we take this particular shape and we start with a material and we press the material through the shape until it comes out looking like this. Now this is, as I said, a lot of fun working with Play-Doh and Photoshop can be fun too. The thing about Photoshop with extrusions is that you have the ability to change your mind, to modify the extrusion after it's created, and to continue to work with it in a 3D environment. Let's take a look. Here we're starting with a new document, and I've got a green layer over the top of my background. And I've got this layer named Extrusion, and I've given this a name so that we can see what happens to it when we create our 3D object. Now we're going to tried to follow the Play-Doh example, so we're going to use a path, and I've created a path in the shape of a leaf. And if I turn this off, you may be able to see it better. So there's our path, and with this green extrusion layer selected, I'm simply going to go to the 3D menu, and I'm going to choose a new 3D extrusion from the selected path. And when I do, of course, Photoshop will ask us to switch to the 3D workspace, and again, I recommend that. So taking a look here, this is what's happened. Our extrusion layer has now become the 3D layer. And so what was the extrusion layer, a simple green pixel layer, is now part of the texture that makes up this object. And here it is in 3D space. And again, I've got the Move tool active. I've got my 3D mode in the Move tool set to rotate the 3D object. And I'm going to grab out here in space, and I'm going to spin the scene around. And so you can see here we've got a 3D shape that has been extruded in this direction and it has some depth. Now we can work with this extrusion in Photoshop 3D. So in order to do that, what we want to do is take a look here in the 3D panel and we can see that we have an extrusion and it has several components that make up that extrusion. We'll talk about each of these components and how they work, but for now, will highlight the extrusion. And as we do in the 3D panel, I've got the Properties panel set up right next to the 3D panel, and we'll look in the Properties panel and see what we have available. With the first option selected here in the Properties panel, selecting the Mesh, we see some options up at the top that we'll talk about later. But what I want to especially point out is the extrusion depth. This refers to how deep this object is. So we can drag this and show graphically exactly what's happening. The further to the right I go, the deeper this object gets stretched. 
and in fact we can go to the left and stretch it forward. So the extrusion depth refers to how long this particular side is stretched out as if we were pushing it through the form with the Play-Doh. But that's not all we can do with it. If we go to the next section, which is the deform section, this is where we can start having fun. Within the deform section, we see the same setting for extrusion depth, and this is no different from the one that was on the front mesh panel. But being here, it gives us access to a lot more settings as well. We have twist, and twist will allow us to actually rotate the extrusion as it's being extruded. So you can see we can go to the left or to the right, and we can go around and around many times, and we can create some interesting effects this way. I'm going to set that back to zero for now. The next one that we have is taper. And taper by default is set at 100%, which is a straight extrusion. But we can drag this to the left, and we can make the extrusion taper inward so the object gets smaller as it's extruded out. Likewise, we can drag it to the right, and the object gets bigger. Again, for now, we're going to set this to the default of 100% for a straight taper. The next section in the 3D panel is for the horizontal and vertical angle. And notice there's a radio button option here for bend or shear. We'll start with it on bend. And by dragging this to the left and to the right, we start to get an actual bending of the object. So we can bend it to the left, we can bend it to the right. In fact, if we drag it far enough, we can bend it all the way around so that it comes in contact with itself once again. So this is an interesting way to modify your 3D object. Set that back to zero. And likewise with the vertical angle, we can also bend it downwards and upwards. And again, we can circle all the way back around on itself and make it into a completely revolved object if we want to. Again, we'll change that back to zero. Now the interesting thing about Photoshop CS6 is that it allows us to work right on the object. So we have this heads-up display here right on top of the object and it gives us access to all these settings. So if you're highlighting this in the center and you can see the heads-up display says extrude, we can drag this up or down right on the object and actually extrude it right here. We can highlight this section and we can adjust our bend and we can just drag it around in any direction and it's sort of a freeform bending as we go. Likewise here we have the taper and we can grab this one, taper it inward and outward just by dragging up or down. Again I'll undo that. So this little heads-up display right on the object allows us to interact with the object directly if we prefer working that way rather than working here with the sliders to see what happens. The next section we want to look at after the deform section is the cap section. And the cap section refers to this front material as well as the back material. You can see here we can set it to the front or the back or the front and back. We'll leave it set on front for now just to see what's happening. Here we have the bevel width and the bevel angle. And the bevel, if we increase this bevel, you'll see what's happening right on the object here. It's somewhat like the appearance that you see on a bevel and emboss layer style, but it's happening right on the 3D object. So we can change the bevel and we can change the angle of the bevel as well. And if you notice on the drawing here, the heads up display is moving as I'm sliding the slider. So you might guess that we can click right on here and we can actually adjust this bevel angle right here as we're dragging on the object and we can adjust the width of the bevel here as well simply by clicking and dragging on the heads up display. Now likewise we have what's called the inflation. We'll set the width and the angle back to zero so you can see what's happening here. And with the inflation we have the ability to actually puff the front out so to give it a sort of inflated look or a balloon-ish look and then here we can adjust the angle how high or how shallow is it and again you can see right here we have the heads-up display we can make those same adjustments right here just by dragging on the heads-up display so again very interactive way of working if you prefer working this way or if you prefer working with the sliders in the dialog box you can go either way so that's a quick look at extrusions in Photoshop CS6 Extended. 
Next week we'll take a further look at extrusions and we'll look at revolving these extrusions, making circular objects out of them, and some of the interesting ways that we can create 3D shapes using the extrude features within Photoshop CS6. I hope you'll join me for that. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of photography, Photoshop, and Lightroom tutorials and related information there. Or you can follow me at mhoffman2001 on Twitter, and you can find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial.